اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب شرح لی صدری ویسر لی امری وحلل عقدتا من لسانی یفقہ قولی Inshallah, in the chapter for tonight, we're discussing yet another character of Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib. As we previously discussed his bravery, and we've also discussed in a glimpse the justice of Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib. Taking into a more practical sense, inshallah, tonight, we're going to look and delve into the morality of the character of Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib. And that's something we don't focus on as much as the standout greater traits of Amir al-Mu'mineen such as knowledge, bravery, wisdom, eloquence. And morality is something that is of a very beautiful nature to hear on the first level and secondly to learn and to apply within our lives. And Amir al-Mu'mineen has morality in different parts of his life. As you can see from these chapters, different examples that Amir al-Mu'mineen has morality in all walks of life. The first I want to draw your attention to is the morality within the battlefield. Now this is one where it occurred as the battle is known as the Battle of Al-Khandaq or known as Al-Ahzab. In the Battle of Khandaq, you find as the Muslims were attacked from within Medina, they created like a trench in which they filled with fire and the person amongst the few that leapt over it, shall we say, to attack them would be a, a warrior by the name of Amr ibn Abdul Wadd al Amri. Now, Amr ibn Abdul Wadd al Amri, to put it into perspective, I mean, we all know the name and he was a brave warrior, but people used to count him as 1,000 soldiers by himself. This characteristics of this man is that he would wrestle with lions as a hobby. You'll find a person like this within the battlefield is to be feared. And he has very much established a reputation for himself at that very moment. That every single person that was there within the armies of the Muslims knew the name of Amr ibn Abdawid. And in which Amr ibn Abdawid himself, he says, why does not anyone face me? As in, why is everyone scared to come and fight? As in, he would say, if I was to kill you, you're considered a shaheed and you'd go towards heaven. And if you kill me, you've done a great deed for your defense and you'd also go towards that of heaven. So why do you not come and face me? And so the tradition says that Rasulullah would look towards his men and he would say, who would like to go out to fight against Amr ibn Abdul al Amri? And the tradition says it's as if they had meaning it's as if they had birds nested upon their heads. That's how still they were. That if they made any slight movements, that bird would fly. They said, except one person, which was a young Ali ibn Abi Talib. He would say, Ya Rasulullah, on the first occasion, I will go out and face him. And Rasulullah would turn to Ali and says, Oh Ali, this is Amr. The second occasion, again, he would ask everyone, who will face Amr? Then I guarantee heaven. Again, no one would move or make a slight movement except Amir al muminin which would say, Ya Rasulullah, let me. And then again, Rasulullah would say, Ya Ali, hada Amr. And on the third occasion, again, he would say to everyone, is there no one amongst you that will go and fight Amr to defend Islam. No one would make a movement except on the third occasion, again, Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. And Rasulullah would say, Ya Ali, this is Amr. And Ali would say, and I am Ali ibn Abi Talib. And Amir al-Mu'mineen would go out to the battlefield and Amr would be surprised 
with the youthful nature of this boy. And he would say, I would not kill you because I have great respect for your father. And he, Amir al would say, but I will kill you because I need to defend Islam. And so you'll find amongst this battle that occurred, Amir al-Mumineen gains the advantage, the upper hand, and is about to strike Amr ibn Abdawid the final blow. In that very moment, as he's about to strike Amr ibn Abdawid al Amri, the tradition says, Basaqa fi wajhi, meaning Amr spat at the face of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. Amir al would turn away, as the people would see, just as he's about to strike Amr ibn Abdawid. He turns away. He moves away from Amr ibn Abdawid whilst Amr ibn Abdawid is on the floor. And he takes moments, then he returns back towards Amr ibn Abdawid and he deals the death blow. And you'll find the morality there is the one that we need to focus on. Because that very morality that Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib had, in that very moment, Rasulullah would say the following statement. He says, the strike of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib on this day is equal to the worship of the Thaqalain, meaning both jinn and ins till the day of judgment. You put the scales, you put one action that lasted seconds from Amir al-Mu'mineen on one side of the scale and all the worship of jinn and ants from Adam until the day of judgment on the other side of the scales, they'll balance out. So you can imagine Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib, why is it that that occurred, that that was given such high rank in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is because that he did it solely for the pleasure because when he's asked why did you move away you had the advantage on a great warrior Amir al says the following he states that as I'm striking Amr ibn Abdul he spat at me when he spat I was angered it goes when I was angered I feared that slight anger that I had would be the cause of me striking him therefore I stopped, I removed myself from him. I calmed down and I remembered I'm doing this solely for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and nothing for Ali. And I returned and I struck him. And that's why we begin to understand there is morality there with even in the strikes of Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib. When he speaks towards Malik al Ashtar on the battlefield in Safin, he says, Malik al Ashtar says, every time I would strike a person, I would hear Ali ibn Abi Talib doing takbir and I would count because every time Amir al-Mu'min would strike and he would send someone towards the hellfire, he says, I would count it until we both reached 1,000 strikes each. And I come towards Amir al muminin and I tell him, oh Ali, you've killed a 1,000 and I've killed a 1,000 as well. Amir al-Mu'min would say, no, your 1,000 is different than mine. He says, how so? He says, a person, before I strike him, I look into his eye and I see if there is a person from his lineage that will become good, I don't strike them. That's how Amir al-Mu'mineen, even in the battlefield, he had a vision, he had etiquette, he had morality. When he takes the river Muawiyah, he doesn't give it or any of its water towards the army of Amir al-Mu'mineen. Ali ibn Abi Talib regains that river, regains the water, but he allows access to the armies of Muawiyah. Why? Amir al muminin You'll find him in every walk of life towards his wife, towards his children, towards the orphans, that he would give everything towards the orphans first. When the honey would come in from different parts, the first of which would be the orphans, and Amir al himself would give them the honey from his own hand and would feed them. Ali ibn Abi Talib. A tradition states that one day he was walking past a house at the time of his Khilafah and he hears children crying. He knocks the door because I mean, the governor of the time wants to ensure that everyone 
is at a place where they are sufficed in their life, that they're not missing anything, that he cannot be able to sleep at night except that he knows all of that, those people that are under his government are sleeping sound, not hungry, not thirsty, and not poor. And you'll find he's crying of the children, he knocks the door. A lady would come, he says, why is the children crying? And she says, oh man, they don't have food. He goes, but I can see the smoke. She goes, no, I pretend to have cooking until they fall asleep. Amir al-Mu'mineen was struck by this. So you'll find him coming the next day with qambar and bringing the food that he's already prepared. All it needs is to be put into the tannur, which we look at to be the oven. So upon entering to assist the lady, he brought, brings forth what we look at to be the necessities of the house. And he would tell the lady, would you like me to do the cooking or prepare the fire? She says, no, the cooking is for the ladies. You prepare the fire, please. So Qambar, the whole time, the lady is speaking about Amir al mumini not knowing that it's Amir al mumini in her house. She would say, you are such a great person, better than that of Amir al mumini He would say, why? Why is this Amir al mumini so bad? He says, he took my husband and he was the cause of him dying. He says, how so? She says, he fought alongside him in the battle of Safin and now he died as a martyr and I'm left with the children and the orphans. So it's Ali that took him to war, as we know, Amir al-Mu'mineen was fighting against Kufr and this man would have died as a shaheed fighting alongside Amir al-Mu'mineen. So Amir al-Mu'mineen would look at her, Qambar would be there, he would say, don't say anything. Many of us have positions and we say, well, how can you talk to me like that? The morality of Ali being the Khalifa of the time, says to Qambar, don't say a word. I'm here not to showcase who I am. I want to do a good deed and leave. So he goes closer towards the fire while he's preparing it. The tradition says, he says, Oh Ali, feel the flames. These are the effects of these people that forget the widows and the orphans. And Qambar sees this. In this moment, you'll find one of the servants enters the house. She sees Amir al-Mu'mineen and runs towards the owner. She says, do you not know who's in your house? She goes, oh, it's a great man. He's better than Amir al mumineen He came in to actually help our children, help me assist our family. She says, that's the Khalifa Ali ibn Abi Talib. You can imagine that there were so many people after the death of Amir al mumineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. As he used to do what he preaches, when the Ahl Bayt say, when you do that which something with your right hand, do not let your left hand know of it. And that was Amir al-Mu'mineen. After his death, these people that didn't know who used to visit them at the nights, didn't know who used to sit with them, who used to bring them sustenance, bring them money, bring them essentials. All of a sudden, for three days, he hasn't entered their house, hasn't assisted them, hasn't come to visit. And then they find out it was Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi that his own sons would not know of that which he does. Imagine, that's how we need to understand morality, that he had it in every aspect of his life. Doesn't matter if I'm at work, at home, visiting parents, in public or in private. The morality is understanding that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows my thoughts and knows what I'm going to do and wanting to do. And remember to always put Ali ibn Abi Talib's morality as an example. That I see Allah before, during and after every action. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.